Good morning YouTube. This is uh, JB checking in. Uh, doing another quick recap. Um, giving you guys more of an in-depth review of our uh, control system and then talking a little bit about how our system runs and, and some of the things that you'll need um, during the season changes of uh, having an off-grid project. Now it's transitioning into the cooler months. We're starting to wake up to uh, 40 degree mornings, 30 degree mornings, and we haven't had an ice morning yet, but um, we've pretty much had a, a lot of frost, um, but we haven't had anything with ice over as far as water pipes and things like that. So, you know, the conditions are, are getting cooler and cooler, and as we head into that part of the season, you want to kind of be prepared and, and uh, have a couple things in mind. If you're going to make an off-grid system, that's going to allow you to power your system as well as give you some heat options. Now currently we're running our heater in the bedroom, uh, heater in the bathroom, um, heater in the living room, all about, uh, they're small heaters, but they don't come on at the same time. I have uh, two refrigerators and a freezer that run in, in this home. Um, as you can hear, kids are in there playing Halo. Christmas trees already up, <clears throat> but you know, we run a lot of various different things and so far we're able to produce in excess of what we need um, as far as for powering our items. Okay, I'm gonna go outside in a second. You can see we just jumped up to 3.9. We brought in 12.2 kilowatts so far today. Uh, so far, max SOC has been 88%. Um, uh, one charge controller, which is the one I'm going to talk to you guys about outside, is uh, brought in a max of 1600 watts. This one's brought in 2610. Um, both doing real good on my system, and um, with as many uh, solar arrays as I have hooked up, it's, it does real good for our design. Um, I added a vent here into the kitchen. Uh, the equipment actually gets pretty warm and that's benefiting us a little bit um, to where we're actually being able to get a little bit of that heat out of this little box that houses our inverter and things like that. We're getting a little heat gain from, uh, from the inverter running 24-7 and that pumps into the home. In the winter time, that's great. In the summertime, we're gonna put a box or something in there just to block it off and allow it to vent out of the top as we had before um, during the summer. Let me take you outside. As you can see, it's pretty bright. Uh, we got into the shed a little bit ago to get the Christmas tree out and and set that thing up. I've been working on it since so about eight this morning. Um, so you can see we got a couple messes out, but here's our array. I don't think I ever made a final video of uh, the replacements, but here we are. I got two mounted systems here that sit um, in front of my three kilowatt array. I basically have this set up and this is 400 watts here. It's wired underground in series. All four of those panels are in series. Um, and these four panels producing 340 watts are all wired in series. And they combine with this set to uh, in parallel to combine with a circuit over here and through these boxes I have a combiner chamber here basically um, but anyway it combines with all the panels I have up here now I have these panels every two are wired up in series and then they're wired up to have three parallel strings come in and combine in this box to combine with those two in the front in parallel so basically I have five connected parallel strings going in through here and it's about 80 88 volts um, 90 volts going through this and then it goes through the ground and into the home to connect to my MX 60 um, and as you guys saw I was getting about 1600 so far today thoroughly um, the highest I think I've achieved is almost two kilowatts um, and Speaking on the pergola, it kind of reduces a little bit of the ability to get a lot of power. Um, namely because the angle, it's right now set at a summer angle. So in the summertime, it'll do great, but let me show you something real quick. Okay, 
this is the top as you can see the panels get mighty dirty um, I don't know if the camera's picking it up as well but um, I have to wash this off every day because uh, occasionally on the dirt road and as you can see out here um, in the fields it picks up wind and sand can settle on that and reduce your production and <clears throat> early in the morning typically I'll try to wash it off so that I can get maximum power um, I just hadn't gotten around to it but since I brought you guys along to see what we're kind of doing um, I just thought that I'd bring that up now I've been off grade for a while you guys that have followed me know know this and this is now a part of the year where it's starting to chill up a little bit and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna build a uh, forced air uh, heater that we're gonna run using our solar power um, that comes from the sun we're not using our panels but we're gonna run the fan off of our solar panel um, and we're gonna use um, a glass uh, and some chambers and some wood and we're gonna just build a forced air heater I'm gonna point it towards the Sun we're just gonna play with that we, we've seen some designs online and thought it would be pretty neat to kind of keep the uh, radiators from turning on we'll just basically run that and it'll keep our um, energy usage on our batteries for the heaters in the bedroom down to a minimum basically because the temperature um, will will already be kind of close to what it needs to be when it's a 40 degree swing or 30 degree swing that heaters having a pretty uh, work pretty hard to get the room up the temp but if you got a solar air heater just even increasing the temperature 10 and 15 degrees that re reduces the amount of energy needed to heat that pretty pretty drastically um, we're also looking into uh, making a water heater doing the same thing uh, one to basically assist with the washing machine so that we don't have to run the uh, on-demand water heater as long um, just to heat the water for for that um, but another um, thing we're thinking about is basically building one large enough to run um, the hot water coming into the house it's our, our water heater has a thermostat enable uh, control on there um, so basically if the water comes in at 90 degrees with a, a high efficiency uh, conversion of uh, our, our water we'll basically be looking at a 20 degree swing our water heater will not need to burn as much fuel to, to heat that water up to 100 110 degrees so you know those are some of the things we're going to be doing today I just wanted to kind of give you guys um, the final uh, look at that um, design we did with the mounts kind of talk about